Alright, when we last left our band of intrepid adventurers, they had begun their traversing of the Feywild and met a strange redcap who had given up his murderous ways to make dyes instead. After a short conversation with the die maker and the two halves of his best friend, the party heads out with more information about the Zentarum agents bound now for Mama Bunny's expansive rabbit folk farmstead. Well, uh, very sorry to have troubled you so much, Mr. Capper. If you want to trouble me less, you could always buy some dyes. I don't make just red. I have blue and purple. Have you any black? Ah... Uh, I could mix some up. It would take a, a few different dyes mixed together, but you throw enough colors in a pot, and you can deepen it to a dark midnight hue. How deep a black do you want? Tobias holds out the edge of his cloak of billowing. This color! He heads over, and the house starts to breathe. Like puffing out slightly at the sides and shrinking in from the top and then the top rises and the sides come back in. After a few minutes he arrives with a large iron jug. Oh, does a gallon do for you? Well, it'll depend on how much gold it'll cost me. Ah, 30? Ah, yes, here you are. 30 gold, fair enough. Just remember that if you splash it on anything that you don't want dyed, too bad. It's going to be dyed now. We don't have a bag of holding yet, do we? No, just the messenger bag. And yep. uh, I don't think the notebooks are in any good enough condition to transfer. Well, then he's just going to have to lug his brand new tub of black dye with him. <laughs> good thing it has a handle. <laughs> it literally looks like a metal bucket that just like somebody put a slightly conical top on. So as you walk with it, it just swings with your arm movements. We could just... It, it, it's a tub. We, can we roll it? It's the size of a pail. You probably could. I will actually have Tobias try to, um, like, lay it on its side and stand on it and use it as a, a giant wheel. Well, it's mm. not that. It's not that. It's only a Not gallon. perfectly round? Oh, well. Yeah, but it's Tobias. He's small-sized. Uh, it would be an acrobatic feat. Roll acrobatics. Okay, oh. that's awkward. Cute. You know what? <laughs> I'll allow it. That's just cute. So, Tobias puts the pail on its side, and in true Wizard of Oz-like nature, your group heads down the road. Tobias <laughs> rolling on a gallon bucket of dye <laughs> as uh, Happy occasionally dashes around the group, yapping as you go. At least the dye will stay in uniform color this way. Tobias just kind of keeps going, he's grinning, he is clearly tickled shitless with himself at the fact that he is able to do this. <laughs> and once you are over a few more hills, you are able to see the expanse of the town before you. And sure enough, Capper wasn't joking when he said the farms of your family have expanded. There were, at one time, other farms. There don't seem to be any more, but the same burrow-like hill homes that your family is famous for uh, packing the dirt together and making into a little homey burrow are all across the north and east side of the town, and there are fields as far as the eye can see. Every once in a while as you're traveling down the road, passing by some of the farms, you will, you know, see the occasional, like, twitching ears and peering eyes peeking through the uh, wooden slits in the fences or popping up out of the top of a fruit tree. But in a moment after regarding your group, they're gone. Like out of thin air? Or did they go into holes? Or um, You're relatively sure that there are probably holes around, but they move fast enough that it's hard to tell. Sometimes it does look like they just disappear. By the time you actually get to the main mound, your ancestral home, there is quite the welcome waiting for you. You see, there is a large fence that cordons off the actual home area from the outlying farms. And as you head up, the fence swings open, a large gate revealing 
over a hundred rabbit folk arrayed in a courtyard in front of this mound. And the roar of cheers is deafening. It sounds like a thousand cavalrymen charging down on you as the family members are stomping their feet in the dirt and kicking up so much dust that for a few minutes it's hard to see anything. And after that couple of moments, you are promptly overwhelmed by bunnies. Oh, oh yes, please, good. please become... Oh, oh, ah. <laughs> you just hear, like, the strangled and and thoroughly ignored pleas of Tobias as he is knocked off of his, uh, his, uh, rather fancy dancing act. Yep. And, uh, smothered by his aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, and God knows what, how many nieces and nephews. Like a zombie movie, you just see him, like, reaching up and trying to claw his way out of the pile as he's dragged down into the enormous amount of relatives. And then, after a moment of him disappearing, he is hoisted up and is now being carried around on top of them, surfing the mosh pit of bunnies as they (laughs) toss him around in excited glee. Well, that's quite the welcome. Beth Neal's just standing rigid stiff. It's it's thoroughly unnecessary! Tobias is looking at the party as if to plea for you to stop this. Um, there's not much we can do, I'm afraid. The sea of rabbit folk parts slightly. Um, well, uh, a little bit more than slightly. Uh, for a large, older, gray-furred rabbit woman who is walking with a cane and wearing a fine pink dress, pushes her sunglasses up onto her nose, wrinkles her little button nose at you. She pulls the sunglasses off, puts them in a little pouch, and then pulls out a pair of clear glasses and places those on her nose, and then peers at you again. Tobias, you've come home. Ah, for a moment it looked like you'd gone dark gray. No, I've I've maintained my colors. Ah, good, good. Hoist him into the dining hall, everyone. Chop, chop. And she just kind of moves (laughs) her hands towards the group, and sure enough, like a like a sea. Is he for dinner? Because she goes, chop, chop. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no! I can walk! I can walk! I can walk! Like a, like a flock of turtles, they hoist him on inside, and they roll up the steps and through the door. And she <laughs> walks up to the uh, remaining three members of the group and says, you must be Tobias's friends, hmm? Madam, and Angie will bow politely. <laughs> Still confused at <laughs> what she just saw, but trying to be polite. She'll take another yeah, couple steps forward until she's just, like, her arm's length away from Angie and kind of peers at her and then looks at the other two. Beth Neal's oh, hand rises up with, with great rigidity to it and shakes a slight wave. Uh, hello. Uh. Velatha would uh, bow politely and be like, that is true. Hmm. Primes. Hmm. Don't you know my boy could have been hurt going out there? What do you think you're doing? Taking him on some kind of wily adventures? And she lifts up her cane and starts smacking (laughs) Angie in the back of the head as she's bowed down. Oh, God. Didn't you ever think of how dangerous it could be to Ow. go out there? He's, he is just a poor little bunny, and he barely has any way to uh, protect madam, himself. But, 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 madam, he's the one who came Don't to us. Don't talk back to me, young lady. I will whip you up one side and down the other. <laughs> <laughs> now then, since you're here, you may as well join us for dinner. I hope you like vegetarian. And she starts slowly walking towards the door. Uh, all right, well, well, we'll we'll take you up on the offer, kind lady. Okay, I guess, well, Angie will look at the rest of the party, I'll shrug in confusion, and start walking after the uh, rabbit folk lady. She 
pauses and slowly turns her head around to look at Angie and fixes her with a pair of beady eyes that may need glasses to see, but look no less dangerous despite her puffy bunny exterior. And she says, it wasn't an offer. It was a demand. Uh, we're coming, we're coming. Good. Valapa will say, yes, we'll be most gracious, uh, Miss, um, Mrs. People around here just call me Mum. Mum. Okay, then. Heading inside, you find the home is a lot less like the large hill that you could see from the outside, and a lot more like the inside of a manor. You don't see dirt floors or roots coming through walls. It's wooden walls like any house you've been in, and open air areas. It's not cramped in here. It's roomy, and it's relatively luxurious. It's also stuffed with rabbit folk, constantly moving to and fro now. They're grabbing streamers, they're bringing food dishes. One of them runs by and you think that's one of Tobias's shoes, but you're not sure. It might just be... No, yep, that's probably it. So, Tobias, you were set down in a very fine chair at the head of the table, and then all sorts of your cousins and nephews started trying to take off your shoes and give you nice slippers and then get you to wear one of three different robes that they had brought you know effectively trying to gussy you up like you're going to some kind of party you saw protest in the beginning and now you only see resign he is sitting where he has been planted hunched forward ears drooping with the thousand yard stare perfectly mirrored on his face that's the image of defeat he is currently <laughs> wearing a purple silk robe with the symbol of a pair of jackalopes on the sides clashing their horns together a bright pink beret and a pair of slippers that look like seals. They make his feet look almost twice as large as his already oversized feet look. And they are fussing over him a lot. Uh, Tobias just feels the gazes of his party upon him. And he just kind of looks up and he tells them in a very calm voice, Resistance is futile. Indeed. My, my regular everyday garbs are just fine enough, thank you. <laughs> His words proved to be true soon enough, as no matter how much Bethaniel scowled or Angela politely protested, it wasn't long before the full party was cloaked in the very same fabric as Tobias, officially marking them as guests in Mama Bunny's burrow. Oh, we're sorry to be a bother. Oh, it's no bother at all. I'm just glad you brought my boy back in one piece. As you can probably tell, I was rather worried. Oh, I, I can imagine. Tobias does, like, poke his face far enough forward away from the, like, the little hands trying to, I'm sure, braid his eyebrows or some shit at this point, and, uh, <laughs> uh, speak up. Uh, yes, Mother, I, I, we received your letter. Uh, you've not had any trouble since, I hope. Oh, there's been trouble, but none for us. Uh, they have, oh, uh, uh, do we have to talk about this now? We could talk about it after dinner. Tobias realizes that actually, yes, he is in fact just hungry and also wait, uh, would preferring dinner to serious discussion right now. And he nods. Good, good. Well, go ahead and puff up and I will make sure that the stew is done. You're not sure exactly what she means by puff up until you get pulled back into the chair and two large puff balls covered in God knows what white chalk people put on their faces get slammed against the side of your head and create a large cloud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. The stare of intense resign returns and stays there. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and thanks to our wonderful supporters that make up our little community. Watching us stream the best available and everything else you see on this channel live to our supporter-only Discord. It's quite active in there with many playing in these games or others and even running their own. This channel wouldn't exist without each and every one of you, which is why I read each and every name against my crying editor's wishes, starting with those in the power tier. 
David, Doodle Poodle, Jay Jones, John the Wicked, Sneaky G.I., and William Smith. In the planar tier, Darth Cavalier, Gordy Danky, Ice Dragon, Jesse Labrie, Joshua Williams, and Sparkle Lord the Fabulous. In the adventurer tier, All's Fiction, Bastion Falcon Wrath, Dragon Tempest, Jeremy B., John R. 300, Justin, Katie, Mystics, Ty Korzak, and V. In the quest giver tier, Bird or the Cage, Breeze Bender, Chris Householder, Eminon, Kyla, Night Archer, ODST Hero, PPNTT807, Robert Mischief, Rio1990, Samantha, Sephiroth Kurosame, and Slathar Silcom. And in the Townsfolk tier, Adrian, Blizzard Hawk, Bennett Snyder, Biz Adrian, Brett Bemis, Dylan Taylor, Doodle Poodle, Ice Commander, Enrique, Lone Soul 6, Love Bites Back, Mordant Dragon, Okada, Scott Steadman, Sergeant Humpty, Shugenja, Tom Brazo, and Wicked Ways. A special thank you to our first ever supporter and longest standing supporter, Scion of Magnus and Sammy Wolf, and as always, I can't forget to mention our creative team, Doodle Poodle, Nala Fontaine, Shadow Wolf, Scorpius187, MC underscore Cheshire, Thriving Inferno, and the Forever DM, me. Thank you all for watching to the end, and as always, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I will see you in the next one. Good night, all.